and welcome. I thought we would do a pick a card reading today and I am so excited. So we have an amethyst, rose quartz, and obsidian. So when it comes to these in particular, these all correspond with a specific chakra. So for amethyst, this is more of your third eye. This is your intuition. This is reading between the lines, the things that are not being said out loud. Um, this is a really, really, really beautiful crystal. I actually got this as a gift, just a gorgeous amethyst crystal point. You know, when this is in balance, you know, your, int your intuition is flowing, you can trust yourself, you're able to envision and manifest like beautifully. Um, you know, you can just think of the whole scenario, like you are in charge, you are in your power. Um, you know, third eye, it's a very, very, you know, powerful chakra. And amethyst is a very powerful stone for, you know, enhancing your intuition. In the second pile, we have the rose quartz. Now, rose quartz, don't be surprised, but it does have to do with your heart chakra, even though it is not green. This is one of those stones that, um, even though it is pink, it's, I guess, out of the chakras, this is like one of the only stones that is not the same corresponding color as the uh, chakra, but uh, this is a very, very powerful tool for not only your love for yourself but for attracting love because we all know that the secret to love and healthy and wonderful relationships is the love that you have for yourself so if you are not balanced if you are not just happy content thriving um your relationship never will be because you are what you attract so this is a very very powerful stone for healing and manifesting love over here we have in the third pile we have obsidian I love this. While I was doing this reading, I actually felt pulled to the obsidian. Obsidian is more of your root chakra. That's your first chakra. Um, obsidian, I mean, on its own, it's incredibly powerful. I mean, this can help you with your feelings of fitting in with your stability in just life, with your finances, with your relationships. Um, it is one of those chakras that if off balanced, you know, it can affect your sex life. If it is balanced, um, you can have just wonderful, like we're talking like Kundalini awakenings, like in sex, like it's, it's a very, very um, helpful stone for that and doing any type of um, tantric sex or uh, manifestation. Also, it has to do with our ancestors and past lives, karma. Um, this is just a really, really beautiful stone point. So, group one, group two, group three. Um, it's okay to feel pulled to more than one. Sometimes I watch these videos and I feel pulled to more than one. Um, we're gonna start with the group one first and then I will meet you all at the timestamps that I will have below. So hello group one, you chose the amethyst point, which has to do all with your third chakra, well not your third chakra, your um, third eye. <laughs> so it's the chakra right in between your two eyes. This has all to do with your intuition and you reading between the lines, the things that are not being said out loud, and also how well you're able to visualize and manifest and bring things from you know, the room above us into our actual reality. So get, reading this group um, was just insane. <laughs> I'm just gonna give you a warning. It was insane. I was very surprised. And um, it was just one of these readings where I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so the first card you got was the Page of Pentacles. Now, the Page of Pentacles is ruled by, well, the zodiac sign is Taurus, and it is ruled by Venus. Um, this is a messenger card. Actually, all page cards are messenger cards. And um, basically, that just means that there is a message that needs to be delivered or a message that is coming to you fairly quickly with this one. Um, this is all about like our earthly pursuits. So anything revolving around money, career, investments, education, business, all of that stuff. But with this being a page, this is of new beginnings. So I already had the feeling that whatever is happening right now, you are at the start of something new. This is something that, especially since you chose this amethyst, I feel like you're starting something new and you are in the very beginning stages you you don't 
you don't have anything like a definitive answer as of where this will go but you, i think your intuition is telling you that this is going to be something big like this is the start of something very big like this is the first seed being planted that is going to grow into a tree that is going to basically thrive and give you abundance and fruit for a very long time um and i say that because the next card you got was this this is the five of pentacles so as you can see we're keeping with our pentacle themes um either right now or in your you know not so distant distant past you were having some type of issues with hardship it could be with sickness but i'm i'm just assuming just with this um breeding i'm really getting this has to do with your finances your money this could mean that you were you know dependent this does have like a, a type of codependent um, vibe to it in that you needed someone else to make sure that you were reaching just, you know, your basic needs of maybe home, shelter, vehicle, food, whatever, um, but you were not able to do it on your own and there was some struggle. This was very difficult for you. Um, thankfully, this is in like a past or a, like this isn't something that is in your future. Um, this is something that you have dealt with and um, this new beginning is like you don't have like a definitive answer like a 100 percent. i know this is going to be successful but intuitively i think you know that whatever you just started or whatever you are about to start has huge potential to take you away from this the next card i got and this is where i got the chills <laughs> was a ten of pentacles um your entire reading is all about money right now um so i guess this is what you need to hear but ten of pentacles this is a virgo type card um our last card was um the five of pentacles was taurus just fyi i don't know if i said that but this ten of pentacles is more of virgo it is ruled by mercury this is financial security like this is just happiness this is abundance not only that this is the type of financial security if you look in the card the entire family is here okay we have multiple generations we have wealth we have opulence i mean the best of everything look even the dogs <laughs> i mean this is just this is like the money card like this is the most exciting money card in the deck i would say um this is the type of money where you're making so much it is flowing over to your family and friends like everyone is getting a piece of this pie this is long-term security so this isn't just like a windfall and you got a big lump sum of money and then it's gone within the next six months like no this is a long-term thing either positive investments or just something that's going to bring you back a you know a really substantial financial return over and over and over so here is where the reading kind of took a turn and now i can see two different messages coming in you pulled um hather this is um basically just of being receptive this is of um either accepting help accepting financial resources um it says allow yourself to receive this will increase your intuition energy and ability to give to others um so i'm getting the feeling someone is having issues asking for help or you're feeling guilty about needing this could come back here to this five of pentacles type setup where you were dependent on someone else you could not stand alone this is saying it is okay for help and so this is where i got different um feelings that um well this and this next card the the hierophant the hierophant is also ruled by taurus which you have like a lot of taurus type um cards a lot of this entire reading is earth energy and so basically this is tradition this is spiritual wisdom um this is basically the masculine counter counterpart to high priestess and so with this this reading could either go one of two ways this is either you having a new beginning planting a new seed that is going to bring you and your family and whoever else you have that means something to you going to bring you long-term financial success right this is all earth energy very heavy earth energy so this is either you or this could be someone else in your life that this could be your husband this could be a parent this could be them starting something maybe a business and you're coming on to help but whatever it is it's going to be it's going to directly affect you it's going to take you out of this this worry this just anxiety this not having enough and it's going to bring you to this 
10 of pentacles this i mean luxury this financial abundance security this is going to the store spending filling your cart and not worrying about how much you're about to spend like this is comfort in absolutely everything and so for the last card and this was really beautiful you got the six of swords the six of swords is an absolutely beautiful card it's one of the more positive um, in in the swords um, altogether and this is of moving away from the past okay whatever obstacle whatever hardship that you were going through you are letting go of it you are healing you are moving forward um, I mean just the entire reading was just really 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 beautiful so if you are worried about your finances if you are stressed I feel like just with you being called to this amethyst point to this third eye point um you know something that has been planted fairly recently or something that is coming in is going to basically change your life and your finances and like i said you have a lot of taurus taurian energy you could be a taurus or whomever else that could actually be helping you because you know there there is if you look we have like a lot of codependency this is you know this is multiple people so for some people this could be you being the one that everyone else is looking up to and you're the breadwinner or this could be someone very close to you having so much that their cup is going to also fill yours and you're going to get that financial security that you've been worrying about so this is a really 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 beautiful reading um i hope you guys liked it and um, i'm gonna get started on the second group okay group two so you chose the rose quartz this has to do all with your heart chakra and so for this this is going to be more around love um this was another all of these readings today have been i would say just the type to get me very emotional like i definitely just felt just excitement and just shock and most of these readings so it was funny because a lot like group one you chose a page so the page popped out this is the page of wands pages have something to do with messages so there is something coming in um and for the page of wands this is uh this card is ruled by the zodiac um sagittarius and it marks enthusiasm adventure good news confidence fearlessness like something is coming very quickly to you some type of news and i think once you get it you're going to be feeling a childlike happiness like this is just this is a very enthusiastic excited individual and um you know when i saw this i was just like oh my gosh all these pages and it's just you you have something good coming in so it's either in the very beginning stages or you're about to like get some good news that is going to change things and for this reading it was funny because yes you chose the rose quartz and so with rose this could symbolize um internal self-love and healing but it can also represent you attracting love and so for this reading um after i pulled your other cards i saw that this actually um shows you attracting in love um you know bringing it to you being like a magnet so this isn't going to be the more internalized love this is going to be you know the love that um you're going to attract to you from others so with this seven of pentacles this is um ruled by the zodiac taurus and um this is like planning of you working hard but all of your hard work is going to reap you know results so this is more long-term um success based off of the other cards that i pulled i feel like this is leaning towards like you assessing the work that you've already done and assessing whatever path you are on um this has to do with your relationships the next card you pulled was the lovers so this is where it got really really good got really really exciting um the lovers has to do with just passion this is strong emotions this is one of those relationships that just fills you up and just you feel like you're gonna lose your mind in love like you probably never thought you could feel this type of love before and um it is the card that can um represent soulmates 
or like marriage material partners so this is like a very serious relationship so with the seven of pentacles i feel like you are assessing something with this very strong bond that you have with someone okay you're trying to figure things out right now um as opposed to where is this going what could this be or if you want to continue on because you then get this beautiful beautiful card of undying love just look at the artwork on this card so this card it says the love you have shared is eternal regardless of the situation the, around this time i started getting the feeling that there might be something weighing on your mind you may be a little unsure of something so the situation right now in the relationship it's you might have a choice because the lover's card isn't just about soulmates or loving relationships it also is about making a choice on something and when we read what the artist had intended when they created this card let me read for you it says when it comes to matters of the heart your help is here it's all around you and inside of you your inner wisdom may seem quieted by any pain that you feel yet be assured that the healing you're undergoing is swift and efficient you truly are healing from inside out um so with this card it has to do with the love from your romantic partner is eternal regardless of the outward appearance you are healing this could mean you are healing from a breakup you are healing from some other type of loss um you could be letting go of an old relationship um or maybe you know it even throws out there that your deceased loved one is happy and sends you love um but really with this eyesults it's just what i felt from this card is that things right now what you're assessing in your relationship you know the love is there like th there's no questioning it the passion the romance all the excitement that you felt it is there with the next card you have the five of cups which is the card of not only walking away of sadness of breakups but it could also mean that there is a second chance like in the traditional rider weight version there are five cups and there's three on this side and there's two on this side he's walking away and the cups are like spilled like you know like it's spilled milk um but the thing is he's walking away but there he still has two other cups <laughs> so he's not going empty-handed this isn't a ten of swords type of card where you're done you're finished you need to start from scratch completely like no this is there was some type of something that got your hopes up something that disappointed you but you this is salvageable you know this is salvageable um this could also this is for only a select few but this could mean um something better is coming with this ending so it could perhaps mean that after you evaluate this relationship it might maybe not have been worth the work and just you just know that you know whatever love that you had it was worth it it helped you it you know made you better but there may be um something more beautiful just right around the bend and once you release this loss and you move on um things will get much 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 easier for you like this could actually be the relationship or the type of person that you get all of the commitment um that supports you and um could really really love you um but i felt like that was only for a few people i don't feel like that energy of walking away completely was the main energy of this reading um the last card is the hermit and a lot of people think that the hermit only represents just being alone just being alone and going inside of yourself um now while they're right it is about going and seeking answers inside of yourself it's also about seeking out higher wisdom this is asking for guidance so this could be you asking guidance from god or your um, angels or your guides this is spiritual um enlightenment and this is only the type of enlightenment enlightenment <laughs> that you can get from within okay so you're either seeking those answers in prayer or through meditation um or asking for you know send me an answer this is you this is you so no one is just going to give you the answer and be like you need to do this like no you have to feel it down like all the way down into like whatever makes you feel um just balanced and happy you know the root chakra or the i'm sorry the um 
the heart chakra is about all what you feel in your heart right w what do you feel is true what what does your heart say like this is a follow your heart type of reading um so just know for for most people i do feel like this is salvageable okay this is sal salvageable so if you guys are not talking right now if things are kind of rocky right now you could be getting um you know information messages something um that could you know help you with this second chance at love but whatever you had going on it's not dead okay it is the love is undying okay so it's still there even if you guys have not seen each other even though you guys may have not talked to each other even though things might even maybe you're living together and things just seem rocky this isn't over so i don't know it was just a very very beautiful um reading and i think that if you have rose quartz i suggest that you do some meditations with it maybe look up some guided meditations on youtube that will help you to open up your heart chakra do that for maybe 10 minutes or so and then ask your question you know put it out there in prayer or meditate on it um and you know just ask for that guidance because with this hermit card it is all about um spiritual enlightenment and just getting that higher wisdom to help you to move forward um but whatever it is like the page of wands it is it is a very positive card so whatever is coming for you with this it will be positive the end result is happy even though it seems you know it might seem a little shaky right now um you do have really good things coming okay so group two thank you so much for tuning in and i'm about to get started with group three so group three you chose obsidian obsidian is a very very powerful tool um anything surrounding your root chakra um, most people do not know if your root chakra is out of balance there is no way for your other chakras to compensate for it. Sometimes if we have something out of balance, like a sacral chakra, sometimes um, another chakra will try to make up for it. So you'll have these, you know, a little bit of unbalance, but it can do the job. But when the root chakra, which is at the very base of your spine, it's um, it, it's around your uh, reproductive or your sexual organs, um, when this is out, it's like good luck like until you fix this and so this has a lot to do with our early childhood and where we might have had feelings of not fitting in um feelings of insecurity of maybe it could be financial insecurity you did not have enough you had um you know a very poor upbringing or this could be um a family member um just not giving you the love that you needed so you felt like you were not a part of the family you were not wanted you were not needed this has all to do with your sense of security and self in the world right this is your basic needs and so it's not only your emotional security but also this can manifest into your financial world um what do you feel like you are worthy of um, are you having issues with your finances and you do not feel like you have enough Maybe you don't feel like you're worthy of enough? Um, so getting this balance, this, this root chakra, this is where the term grounding comes in at. Whenever someone says grounding, they're talking about your root chakra. Um, it, when this root chakra, it's not only your, your pelvic region, it extends all the way down your legs to your feet. Like, um, so if you're to do, let's say, um, color therapy you would be using red that's the color of the root chakra and um, it could help you to meditate on red and to think about a ball of red light over um, you know your pelvis growing and expanding and just thriving maybe pulsating um, so when this is grounded um, attracting opportunities and money in your career will come so easy to you um, having emotional stability in your relationships like feeling secure if you're one of those people who has a little bit of anxiety and you feel like anything that goes wrong all of a sudden you like to jump to conclusions and you're just always worried about losing your partner your partner leaving you that's all root chakra ailments and so once you get this balanced you will feel more secure you will not feel like you're about to be abandoned at any moment you will not feel like um, you know in your finances like you don't have enough um, you will feel more abundant this is a very 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 
very powerful chakra and obsidian is great in helping you to overcome that especially when it comes to the childhood wounds it also helps with past life wounds as well so this is shadow work that will change your life and it will change it in a physical way because you're going to see the physical abundance come in your life once you finally have this balance i'm going to be doing a video on root chakra work um so this Okay, all of the readings I did today were insane. This one was no different. Um, the first card you get is the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups, okay, so the zodiac sign that rules this card is Cancer. Two of Cups is all about true love. This is luck in your intimate relationships. This is true love maybe being on its way to you. Soulmates, harmony, this is one of the best cards for love. And it's funny, so, group two they drew the um the lovers and you have the two of cups so like those are two of the most beautiful you know cards for relationships this is this is all about relationships in fact the lovers card could go both way. it could go either way it could go relationships or it could be making a choice because there's two people on there and traditionally sometimes it could be making a choice between two different lovers um and uh, it's them going maybe trying to figure out which is the right one with two of cups this is all about coming together this is all about partnership um this is this is luck in all of your partnerships all of your relationships um and, and harmony and so some people would say that this is the love card this is the best love card but really it's two of cups and the lovers in my opinion so next you have the queen of swords and so right off the bat um i was just i was kind of freaking out because you also chose you know root chakra which has all to do with security um and with the queen of swords this is not an insecure woman this card is ruled by libra this is a woman who is independent she's direct and she is to the point so in some readings queen of wands could be someone meddling in your affairs like in your relationship like a woman who's causing you issues this could be a mother-in-law this could be an ex that is a female but in this reading specifically i was picking up on this is calling you to be like her which this woman she gets to the point she's direct she's not afraid so in your relationships i think you're feeling some insecurity you, something has you a little worried and um, you know your root chakra is now going out of whack you don't feel like you deserve this or you feel like you're going to be left you, maybe this feels like it's too good to be true um, whatever the issue is it's telling you to come at it with courage and just be to the point and just you know just just be fair I mean Libra is all about being you know just just fair and honest those are the two most you know important things um the next card which just reiterated what i felt when i when i chose this card you know when i picked it off the deck is the two of swords so the two of swords is also libra <laughs> so you get a lot of libra here a lot of stuff is going on in your mind libra is an air sign okay this is about making choices um this is about um it's it's the sign of the scales so you're weighing your options two of swords specifically is about being at a crossroads this is time to think okay she is in quiet contemplation she is sitting she's trying to figure it out she has her eyes closed so she's she's being guided not by what she can see but why by what her her logic and her mind says and so you know this is an obstacle and at, with this you might feel stuck or unsure um like you're at a stalemate i already knew you were feeling a little unsure because this came across as um as advice as something that you should be more like which she is not unsure of herself she is is confident and she just says what she has to say so you might be making a choice right now trying to figure out which way to go and the next card kind of helped me with deciding what which way you know the universe wants you to go and so this is called freya and it is such a beautiful card freya this is be bold look how gorgeous this card is hope you guys can see it there's not too much of a glare so this card says unleash your adventurous side take risks and be daring okay this queen of swords she is daring <laughs> okay she is direct she is bold all right she is not scared um 
with Freya. I'm going to read you from the book that came with it that explains what the artists meant when they, um, you know, when they created that card. And it says, don't play it safe right now. Don't play it safe, guys. Instead, take bold action in the direction of your true heart's desire. Success comes not from timidity, but from committing yourself fully to realizing your dream. Hold the clear intention and success, and it shall come about. So with this, this is saying, take a risk, make a bold life change, appreciate your body, flirt, go have fun, and celebrate. You guys have a lot of Libra in this in this spread and libra is one of the more flirtatious signs okay they are very sure of themselves they are very charming they are charismatic they are an air sign they speak very smoothly okay they can charm people just by off of some eye contact and a few very cute well put words like they're you know in relationships libra thrives and so you guys have a very relationship oriented reading um just with all the libra but also with the two of cups and cancer um and so you need to be that girl you need to be that woman you need to be bold um you know you're at a crossroads right now and the crossroad is saying don't play it safe because with this two of swords you're, you're weighing your options okay this is also libra two of swords is also libra so you're trying to figure things out right now and it's saying whatever is on this you I know mean, i don't know whatever is on either side that is the more this is like you taking risks um it's saying go with that one so don't play it safe the next card you got which was so beautiful is the knight of wands the knight of wands is beautiful and this can be read two ways so first knight of wands is sagittarius they are bold sagittarius is so bold guys they are they are just a huge smile on their face they just have the confidence to go after whatever they want fearlessly like they are they're one of the more extroverted signs in the zodiac and so this could represent a fast moving person something or someone is coming into your life quickly um this is about being charming so you guys keep on like being like charming like charming keeps coming up um flirting keeps coming up um but this is just self-confidence being daring passionate and free so for some of you this is a person who's coming in who is like this and maybe you feel a little off balance by them you might be feeling i don't want to say well yeah i mean because you chose obsidian which is we talked about it being the root chakra so you might be feeling some insecurities right now um and so this person might intimidate you a little bit if you know if a sagittarius has their eye on you and they want you oh my gosh it could be very intimidating <laughs> for some of our more introverted signs you know <laughs> they can be you know they can be a bit much you know they're very passionate signs but also this could be telling you to be like this okay to be like freya to be bold to be passionate to be daring and just free so yeah for some of you this is a person coming in but for others this is saying you need to be like this and then the last card you got and um, this is really just it's the icing on the cake this is the strength card guys it's time to have strength i know you might be worried you might be your insecurities or some type of trauma may have been triggered um and there are many meditations you can do to help open your root chakra to help balance it so you feel secure so you feel confident so you feel like I i've got this i belong i am good enough especially if you're dealing with someone who they seem too good to be true like oh my gosh they're out of my league um doing some root chakra healing meditations guided meditations visualizations could really really help you in just feeling secure and comfortable so this is just have strength be courageous have focus this is you being strong even under pressure so i really don't want you guys to worry because like there is a bit of anxiety in this reading but it's just telling you just to stand up and um, just to go after your heart's desires um i really really suggest you know working with your root chakra um you know just it could just take as you know as less as like 10 minutes a day to do a meditation surrounding this and you can also do other meditations balancing other chakras that you feel like might also be out of balance i would recommend if your root chakra is a little out of balance you might need to do also a healing meditation for your solar plexus because that is where all of your confidence and your strength and how you show up in the world and that vibe you give people when you walk into the room that's 
it's coming from your solar plexus and so when this is out of whack um, it can make you feel uh, not good enough and uh, it can just drain your confidence and so those two are very very closely even though they're not close because like the root chakra is all the way at the base and the solar plexus is um, right beneath your breastbone so they don't seem like they're close but uh, they directly affect each other so when one is out of whack you know like I said at the beginning of the video if the root chakra is out of whack nothing else can be in balance <laughs> until this is until this is fixed so also i would look into doing um aaron dowdy has some things on healing childhood wounds and um childhood wounds and your feeling of security and safety are directly related to root chakra so if you start doing some childhood um shadow work that will directly affect your relationships and not only that but uh just who you are and um what type of people you attract so i hope you guys enjoyed this message and um yeah i guess i will see you in the next video